Good evening, New Covenant. This is your pastor, Reverend Robert Drake, sitting here in this dealing with this pandemic and staying in the house and doing what we must do to stop the spread of this. I'm actually sitting out in my garage this evening, sitting here doing some reading. I was watching a friend of mine doing a devotional for his church, and I figured I would go on and do a little something for New Covenant Baptist Church myself. How's that sound? I've been reading a book called The End of Me by a guy by the name of Kyle Eidelman. And Kyle talks about how we don't really get to know God until we come to the end of ourselves. And I, I was sitting reading and I was thinking about how things are going and how things are happening right now. We're experiencing things we've never experienced before. And, and it's getting to the end of us because we have no help. I mean, we, the only help we have is Jesus. We cannot help ourselves. So I think it's really coming to the end of us. We are really realizing that we must lean and depend upon him. And it brought me to the story about this guy by the name of Sinful Simon. Simon was a guy that hosted a party. He hosted a party and Jesus came to the party. And at this party, when you would come in, the, the, the duty of the, of the host at the party was to, when people came in, he was to, to wash their feet because, you know, in those days they didn't wear shoes that covered their feet. They wore sandals and walking in, in sand and dust and dirt and their feet became very, very dirty. So one of the things that the host was to do was to, to, to give the, the, the guest a kiss and to, to wash their feet. Well, old sinful Simon let Jesus come in and he never even touched his feet, never done anything to him. Jesus just came in and sat down. And in those days, they didn't have chairs like we have today and tables to put your feet under and things like that. So they leaned back on pillars and they would just put an elbow down and lean back on, on the pillow and just relax. Well, some a young lady came to the party. A young lady that wasn't invited came to the party. And the lady had been through some things in her life is what we can see. And she got to the party. She came uninvited. She bust through the door. You know, sort of like how people do who've never been to church before. They just bust through the door. They just come right on in. And we don't know what their problem is or what's going on with them. But they bust through the door. And that's what this lady did. She bust through the door. You know, when people do it like that in church, we look at them kind of strange because they're not our church folk. They don't dress like we dress. They don't look like we look, don't talk like we talk. And when they come in like that, we kind of push them to the side. Well, this lady came in and she came in. She didn't pay no attention, to, not any attention to, to Simon or any of the other religious elite guests that she had in her house. She came in and she went straight to Jesus. She went to Jesus. She noticed Jesus' feet were dirty. Noticed that Jesus didn't have this and didn't have the things that should have been given to him when, as soon as he came in the door in Simon's house. So the Bible says that she washed Jesus' feet with her hair. She washed his feet with her hair. She took the tears from her eyes and used her hair, and she washed the feet of Jesus. Now, now that's something unusual because she did something that the guests didn't even do. She did something nobody else did that everybody should have been doing. She, she took the tears from her eyes, and she washed his feet with her tears and her hair. And isn't that something? When I look at that and I think about that, I look and see how, she did something that Simon should have done. She did something somebody else should have done. Sort of like when people come to church who've never been there before. Instead of pushing them to the side and telling the young men to pull up their pants, hey amen, we ought to be going to them and reaching out to them and talking to them instead of treating them like an outcast. But this lady didn't care. She didn't mind. She just wanted to get to Jesus. And, and, and as she got there, she began to wash his feet and do all of that. In my mind, I see where this lady had came to the end of herself. The story says that the lady was a she was like a street lady. They they used the words to say not to say she was a prostitute, but the lady was a prostitute. Probably some of the guys in the room didn't even say nothing to her or talk to her because they probably had some experience with her. I leave that alone, but we know how that goes. But but I believe they they turned their head to her because they didn't want her to notice who they were. But as the story goes on, she she did all of this and then she took out some perfume. Some perfume that was very expensive, probably all that she had, all, the last of everything that she had, she took it out and she took that perfume and she began to anoint Jesus. 
She took everything that she had. I hope, hope y'all hearing what I'm saying. She took everything that she had. She took all that she had left. Everything she had left, she, had, she was at the end of herself. So all she had left was this bottle of perfume. So she took that bottle of perfume and they said she broke it in the box. She broke the alabaster box and she began to pour the, 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 the spice, the, the perfume, whatever it was, she poured it on onto Jesus. And isn't that something? She took all that she had. I'm, I'm saying everything that she had. She took it all and she gave it to Jesus. Now, when we come to church a lot of times, we want to praise, we want to holler, we want to scream, we want to shout. We might take just a little I'm going to praise this much today. I'm going to praise this much next Sunday. Sunday after that, I'm going to praise this much. But this lady came to Jesus and gave him everything that she had. Now, when I think about it, I, I, I think about how we ought to come. I, I, I'm thinking in my mind about how the Sunday is going to be when, when this pandemic is over and we get to go back to church. Are we just going to measure our praise out to him? Are we going to give him all that we have? I can do you one better than that. When we sit back in our homes tonight or today or whenever, and we think about the goodness of Jesus, when we sit back in our homes and we think about how good God has been to us, when we sit back tonight and think about all that we've been through in these last few weeks and how good is God, God has been to us, and we're not one that is suffering from the, the COVID-19. We're not one who is suffering from this and suffering from that. Are we going to give him unlimited praise are we just going to pour them out a little bit i like how the story goes because the ladies they say that she took the alabaster box and she broke the box meaning that when she broke it the, the stuff just went everywhere it got it got on her it got on jesus got on some more people and i can just imagine seeing this lady walking down the street after she leaves from the party walking down the street and jesus went before her and people smell see how jesus smelt they smelt the aroma on jesus and she she went one way jesus going the other way and and I can see somebody smelling Jesus and then smelling her and then saying, wow, she smells like Jesus. Why don't we get that smell on us today? Why don't we get that smell on us? Why don't we get that in us so we can be going around? They can say they look like, smell like, act like. I think they must be a child of the king. Even in the midst of this pandemic that we're going through, in the midst of the trouble that's on our, in our hearts, in the midst of things that's happening and going crazy, wanting to get out of the house and can't, when we do go somewhere, is somebody going to be able to look at us? Look at look us in our eyes, look us in our face and say, that is a child of the king. I don't know about you, but that's what I want them to say about me. I don't know how you feel about it, but I want them to look at me and say, he look like, act like, smell like. I, I think he must be a child of the king. May God bless you. Have a wonderful evening.